Whether you're a whitetail deer enthusiast or just enjoy being in the outdoors, I'm sure you've heard of Pennsylvania's recent news. In early October 2012, Pennsylvania confirmed the first case of chronic wasting disease, or CWD, in a whitetail deer. Although the case was not found in a wild deer, it provides enough fear to bring this issue to the forefront of research. The confirmed deer was a three-year-old doe found on a deer farm in New Oxford in Adams County, Pennsylvania. Shortly after, a second deer from the same farm tested positive as well. CWD was first discovered in 1967 in a captive mule deer at a wildlife research facility in northern Colorado. At first, scientists were unsure of what the disease was and simply termed it as a clinical wasting syndrome. It was not until 11 years later, in 1978, that CWD was recognized as a transmissible spongiform encephalopathy, or a TSE. Things took a turn for the worst in the early 1980s when CWD was identified in a wild elk, followed by being detected in a wild mule deer, both in Colorado. As the public gained increasing awareness and officials implied surveillance practices, more and more cases were discovered, not only in Colorado, but also in Wyoming. For many years, the region of northern Colorado and southeastern Wyoming was labeled the CWD endemic area, and it was believed that the disease only occurred here. In 1997, due to the increasing frequency of cases in this area, intense surveillance began outside of this region. Several more states were then confirmed as CWD positive. Many of these states had CWD in wild populations, some had CWD in captive herds, and some were positive in both areas. Despite scientific research and studies, scientists could not determine what was causing the disease to spread, and to this day, it is still unclear. Through all of this, Pennsylvania was able to remain CWD-free until a recent devastating turn of events. As I stated earlier, CWD affects cervids, which include white-tailed deer, moose, and elk. Because of the disease is spread through feces, urine, and saliva, it is feared that areas with the highest density of white-tailed deer will be hit the hardest. It is unsure if the disease can be spread maternally, which is from mother to offspring, but if so, it's only another reason why CWD is so feared. It is not a coincidence that the first case was found in a, in a game farm because these pens are usually only an acre or two large and contain up to 10 to 20 deer. With the high density of deer in these pens, it's easy to see how the disease can be spread so fast. Common water sources and feed sources are single-handedly the main reason why chronic wasting disease can spread at such an alarming rate. It's unknown what exactly causes the transmission of chronic wasting disease, although the infectious agent is believed to be passed through saliva, urine, feces, and possibly antler velvet. Transmission may also occur from direct animal-to-animal -animal contact or from the fetal connection of mothers to unborn young. The infectious agents of CWD are extremely persistent in the environment, which allows transmission to be either direct or indirect. High deer concentrations in captivity or caused by artificial feeding will probably increase both direct and indirect transmission. Well, chronic wasting disease is a chronic uh, progressive neurodegenerative disease that is known to affect multiple species of cervids including uh, several species of deer, mule deer, white-tailed deer, black-tailed deer, as well as elk and moose. Um, it's believed to be caused by what's known as a, a prion, which is a, which is a word that was created from uh, proteinaceous infective protein or proteinaceous infective uh, substance particle. So prion is sort of the condensed version of, of that word. And prions are abnormally folded proteins. Reg with regards to human health, um, there's, there's no evidence right now to support, uh, to support th th that uh, CWD can be transmitted to humans. Um, multiple studies have been done looking at uh, the, the ability of the prion protein in vitro to convert the prion protein that naturally occurs in the human brain. 
And uh, remember, what I, as I said earlier, this, uh, the abnormal prion protein, uh, when it gets in proximity to the normally occurring prion proteins that are in the brain, um, they, they go through sort of a chain reaction and can change their conformation. Uh, and that has not been demonstrated to be possible in vitro with the prion proteins that are present in the human brain at this point in time. Um, the majority of the evidence indicates probably no risk of infection to humans. However, we can't say that definitively at this time. So we do uh, advise people to consider this as a potentially infective substance to humans and to take reasonable precautions to not consume uh, especially high-risk materials like nervous system and, and, and lymphoid tissue, um, but perhaps even not consume meat from animals that uh, appear to be infected with clinical signs suggestive of chronic wasting disease or certainly not any tissue from animals that actually test positive for chronic wasting disease. CWD is a slow and progressive disease because the disease has a long incubation period. Deer infected with CWD may not produce any visible signs of the disease for a number of years after being becoming infected. As the disease progresses, deer with CWD show changes in appearance and behavior. These clinical signs include weight loss, tremors, lack of coordination, blank facial expressions, loss of appetite, teeth grinding, drooping ears, and excessive thirst, salivation, and urination. Chronic wasting disease in Pennsylvania was recently discovered in a captive doe that had died in an Adams County facility. That same doe had recently spent some time at a Lycoming County facility, as well as two York County facilities for breeding purposes. As a result, three of these facilities are now under quarantine with no deer allowed to leave the facility. This is due to the chance that any of the deer within these facilities have come into contact with the infected doe. Now that CWD has been confirmed in PA, many changes will have to be made. An executive order has been made by the Pennsylvania Game Commission to set up a 600 square mile disease containment area. Within the area, hunters may not use deer-based attractants that could concentrate wild deer. During the firearm season, hunters will also have to take their deer to special checking stations so that they can be tested for CWD. The order also states that no part of the deer's brain may be transported out of this area. It is advised that people do not feed deer because this causes congregation where an infected deer would be highly likely to spread the disease to others. Also, hunters are encouraged to refrain from using any type of deer lure or attractant for the same reason. As mentioned previously, the occurrence of CWD in PA will certainly bring about new hunting regulations. The baiting of deer while hunting in the state is illegal. However, you can use feed and mineral blocks during other parts of the year. Because this type of activity causes deer to congregate in an area, there may be future bans on any type of artificial feeding. There may also be restrictions on the use of certain types of lures such as doe urine, which many people like to use during the rut, because this causes deer to congregate and it's also believed to be a way in which CWD is spread. If CWD spreads through Pennsylvania, this may bring a rise to mandatory check stations throughout the state. There will already be check stations set up in the 600 square mile contaminant zone in Adams and York County where the first case was found. Due to this, there may also be restrictions on the transportation of deer carcasses throughout the state just to make sure the disease is not spread in un into uninfected areas. A hunter may not know that he or she has harvested an infected deer. The only way to really know is if the deer is showing clinical symptoms at the time of harvest and then having lab tests done to confirm that. Remember though that CWD has a very long incubation period which could last up to a few years so a hunter may potentially harvest a deer that has chronic wasting disease, but is not yet being affected by it. So when it comes to um, treatment and prevention options for chronic wasting disease, um, there's really not much available to us right now that, uh, that, that we know to be effective. So with, uh, with regards to treatment, there's really no effective known treatment for this disease. Um, the disease will 
invariably run its course over the period of maybe a month to at most a year. Usually it's several months and then an animal will die from the disease. So um, it is considered a, a, at this time a 100% fatal infection and we have no means of treatment.